The first step to learning Blender is becoming comfortable with the user interface. Before we start learning any of the tools and any of the advanced features, we want to make sure that you're comfortable enough to navigate around Blender and customize the interface. So for the first thing uh, we should talk about is uh, two important principles for using Blender. The first one is, is that, as a rule, you'll want to try to keep your left hand on the home row of the keyboard and your right hand on the mouse. The reason why that is is because uh, Blender, by design, has many of the shortcut keys grouped on the left hand home row of the keyboard. Also, Blender uses the left, middle, and right mouse buttons differently than most Windows applications. So, be careful uh, when I start saying left click, right click, and middle mouse click because those are very important and they make a difference. All right, so now that we've gotten that out of the way, uh, let's go ahead and do a little tour of the interface. So what I'm going to focus on is identifying parts of the interface, particularly windows. Blender uses non-overlapping windows. What this means is that the Blender interface is split into windows that don't overlap with each other. This makes it really easy to customize the interface. Right now, here we have our default Blender screen. We have three windows. We have a top one right here, which is our information window. We have a middle one here, which is our viewport window. And down here, we have our buttons window. Now, you can see that when I move my mouse into a different window, that the header for that window becomes highlighted. So as I move down to the buttons window, you can see that this header becomes highlighted. One thing you've probably noticed is that the header doesn't always have to be at the top of the window. Uh, for our 3D viewport, right here it's on the bottom. On that divider line, if we left click and drag, we can uh, shrink and expand the different windows. If we right click on the divider line, and select split area, now we can take our windows and split them. As we move our mouse into different windows, you can see the uh, divider line changes. If we press the middle mouse button, we can uh, change what direction the divider line is going to go. And then if we want to confirm it, we just left click to confirm. If we want to cancel, you can either press escape or right click. Now, that's a standard convention in Blender. Right-click cancels, left-click confirms. So let's go ahead and split our interface a little bit more. We right-click, split area, and then left-click to confirm. Let's do the same thing down here. Right-click, split area, and then left-click to confirm. Now you can see that I can move this divider line uh, independently. If I want these two divider lines to merge, all I have to do is align them up so it's on there, pixel perfect, and now you can see these two divider lines merged. <coughs> okay, now that we've uh, mutilated our interface, let's uh, join these together. Now before I do that, I'm going to change the window type for this window up here. Right now, you can see it's the 3D viewport. I can just click on this uh, leftmost button on the header, and I can change the window type. These are all of the window types in Blender. So I'm going to say, just for the heck of it, I'm going to set this, this one to the text editor, just because I want this to be different. So I... Okay, now if I want to join a window, I just right-click, and then select Join Areas, and now you can see that uh, whatever window my mouse cursor is in, that it becomes grayed out and there's an arrow going into it. What this means is that if I left click to confirm this, this window will be destroyed and the one above it is going to be um, replaced by it. So if I left click to confirm this, then the 3D viewport window was destroyed and the text window uh, took its place. So I'm going to do the same thing with this one right here. Just going to right click, join areas. Now I want to destroy this text window. I left click confirm, and now my 3D viewport is back. I'm going to do the same thing here right click, join areas, 
left click to confirm. Okay, now as far as our position of our headers are concerned, we can change that. Here we can just right click on the header and then we can set it to top or bottom or we can even turn the header off altogether. Now just to make things a little bit difficult, I'm going to remove the header on my 3D viewport as well. Okay, so now I have no headers to click on and only one divider line being shared by two windows. Okay, how am I going to bring the correct header back? So let's say uh, I want to bring the header for my buttons window down here back. So what I do is I have my mouse in this window first, move in to the divider line, right click, and then say add header. Okay, there's my header. It's now in my buttons window. Now if I want to do the same thing here, I start with my mouse in the viewport window, move down, right click, add header. Okay, now my header is back from my viewport. Now I'm going to right click on this header, bring it back to the top. Okay, so now we have everything set back to normal. Now, when we customize the interface, we will probably want to save them or have different ones stored up. Um, when we are working with the software, we may be modeling, we may be animating, we may be texturing, we might be writing scripts, we might be doing video editing. All those tasks are different, and chances are we're not going to want to have this layout. And quite honestly, it's impossible to do animation with this layout we have right here. So we can have different screen layouts. Up here on the uh, info header, which is our main menu, if we click on that little pop-up menu, here we have a list of different screen layouts that are saved. We can click on these to select different screen layouts. Right now we're set to model. We can select our animation screen layout, our sequence, which is Blender's uh, compositing and video editing. Uh, we can go to our material screen. An easy way to do that is we can cycle through them by holding down control and then left arrow or right arrow. So I'll allow you to cycle through these different screens really quick. Now let's say we want to add our own screen layout. Well, click on the pop-up, then we say add new. Now what it's, what it's done is it's created a duplicate of our current screen layout. All we have to do to rename that is just click on that, and then we can rename it to something, something else. So let's name it 6, and then call it text editor, because I want to have a text editor window layout. And you'll notice that I added a 6 there. Okay, the reason why that is, is because Blender sorts your screen layouts alphabetically. So if we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it's going to be in that order. So our text editor is going to be at the end. So now I can change my window type to text editor. I'm just going to create a new text file. Okay, there we go. Now all I have to do is hold down control and then left, right to cycle through my existing and now my newest screen layout. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, uh, let's go into how you can uh, customize certain Blender options. Remember how I said that this is the info window? Well, this is where our user preferences are at. And we can't see them right now because the only thing that's visible is the header for that window. So if I click and drag that down, here's our user preferences. Now, I'm not going to explain what all these are because they're pretty self-explanatory or they might take a lot of explaining. So just go ahead and browse through these to see different ways that you can customize the Blender interface. So I'm just going to put that back. All right, next we have our buttons window. This is what we have at the bottom. So I'm going to bring this up and then zoom in on it so we can see things better. One of the more powerful things about the Blender interface is that everything is rendered in OpenGL, meaning that the interface is fully scalable, which includes these buttons. If you want to scale the buttons in and out, all you have to do is hold down Control and drag with the middle mouse button up and down. That allows you to scale the button panels. You can use the middle mouse button wheel to 
uh, scroll left and right, or you can hold down control and then use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. And then hold down the middle mouse button to move the view around as if you're using the hand tool in, let's say, an Adobe application. Now on our uh, buttons window header, here you can see we have some context buttons. This sets a, well, gives us um, a bunch of different uh, button panels for, like let's say this one we have shading, which is materials, textures, lighting. Here we have one for uh, objects, another one for editing. Here's our scene options. And sometimes when we click on a context button, there will be sub-context buttons. So these ones give us uh, more button panels. The one that has the most sub-context buttons is the shading context button. And here's where we have one for lighting, uh, materials, textures, radiosity, world, you know, and so on. So we're going to go ahead and fiddle around with these ones. Now as far as customizing the order of these panels, all you have to do is left click and drag from the header of one of these panels and then move it around and then let go and it will lock into place. You can see when I do that, uh, the other panel will uh, make way for it. Now let's say we want to take one of these panels and since we don't use it very often or at all, we want to minimize it, just click on that little arrow and then it will collapse. Also, what we can do is we can take panels and tab them. If we left-click left and drag on this panel and then let go while on top of another panel, you can see when that uh, white border shows up. When we let go, that lets us know it's going to be tabbed. And if you want to rip it out, you just click and drag it out. Okay. Another thing we can do is we can have them horizontal, horizontally aligned, which is how they are now, or we can have them vertically aligned. To do that, we just right-click in an open space of the buttons window, <coughs> and then we can change the panel alignment. So let's change it to vertical. Now you can see our panels are vertically aligned. You can see they react the same way. We click and drag them. And then we can do free mode. So they don't snap at all. We can put them wherever we want. Okay, one thing you might want to have a question about is if you want to move a panel that does have tabs, just don't click on the tab itself. Click on some empty space like here's a corner, and that will move all three of them. Okay, I'm going to set this back to horizontal. All right, so there we go. So that's how you can customize the uh, placement of the button panels. Now let's go into interacting with some of these buttons. Uh, some of them are kind of special because they have sliders, some of them have numbers, some of them will appear as different colors. This basically just lets us know what type of button it is. Generally, if they are blue or, like let's say over here, purple, they are toggle buttons. Some of these only have two states, like this radio button and the ray trace button. And some of the buttons are mutu mutually exclusive toggles, so only one of them can be on at a time. For example, these buttons right here, which allow us to change the frame size. Now we have our number buttons, like these ones right here. You can tell it's a number button because it's gray and has a number in it. Uh, we can click on these little arrows right here to change the value up and down. Or we can click on the center where the button is and then type in a number. And then press enter to confirm it. Now, let's say we want to slide the values left and right. We just left click and drag it and we can do it that way too. This makes a lot more sense when you have number buttons that have a slider on them, which abound when you're playing with materials. So for these ones, See, it's still a number button. It's gray, has a number next to it. We can even click on the number and then change the value of it that way. Or we can just left click and drag on this little slider to change the value. Now there are two modifiers that you can use when changing a number with a slider or with these number buttons. 
if while you're left clicking and dragging, if you hold down shift, you can see that I have to move my mouse a lot more to change the value. This gives me more fine tuned control. If I want to set the value in steps, I just left click and drag and then hold down control. Okay, so control does it in steps and shift gives me fine tuned control. Now that shift and control modifier is a you know pretty standard in Blender. You you can use those uh, the shift and control modifiers when you are moving, rotating, and scaling objects. It works the same way. Now that you've gotten used to using those buttons, that does it for this video tutorial. So hopefully that will give you enough information to get you started on. Uh, configuring the Blender interface. As with all these video tutorials, you will probably want to uh, watch them a few times, maybe, you know, pause it and then try it out on yourself uh, with Blender open. Uh, that works very well too.